What's going on everybody? It's AntiJaw100 here and welcome back to another video. Video games go through many changes. In fact, the final product ends up being way more different than what is originally intended in some cases. Of course, it's not just games. Movies, TV shows, even novels go through these phases. But today, I'm going to talk about Nightmare at Charles 3. You're probably asking, what is Nightmare at Charles? To be brief, Nightmare at Charles is a FNAF fan game series created by me, and the first game was released on December 7th, 2018 on Game Jolt. It's since spawned three sequels, but I do have more plans for this trilogy. I'm not going to spoil them, of course. Now, looking back on the series now, while I'm proud on some aspects of the games, there are also areas where I definitely could have done better on. One in particular is Nightmare at Charles 3. I'm not going to discuss what I'm not impressed with, but I'm just going to show you guys the changes that it went through before it became what it is today. Now, let's go back to the year 2019. It was a couple months after I released Nightmare at Charles 2, and I had plans for a third Nightmare at Charles. I thought the company who made the characters going out of business after a terrible lawsuit and auctioning off their assets to the public would make an interesting story for the series, so I just went with that. With the story concept in place, it was time to think of some characters. Obviously, since Ricky Rabbit's restaurant was mentioned in the last game, it only made sense for its main mascot it was named after to appear in person. As you could see, Ricky looked very different than what he appears now. He looks very similar to Sprinchat with his gritting smile, his withering, and his half full and half broken ears. You probably know Dingo and Potty were also part of Ricky's group, but what you don't know is that it wasn't originally these guys who were created. It was originally a red parrot, a blue hippo, a mare, and a rundown, slightly mashed up Freddy Fazbear. I'll go over them each. Here's Mango, and as you can see, he's pretty much just a recolored version of Potty Parrots. The only difference is that his lower legs don't match the color of his beak, and he doesn't have talons and instead have endo feet. I chose the name Mango because why not? Up next is Button the Hippo. He was a scrapped character for the first Nightmare of Charles. You see, it wasn't always Charles, Billy, and Ashley. It was originally going to be an elephant, a hippo, and a tiger. But one of my friends said it would have been too complex to model an elephant or a hippo into an animatronic. And this was before FNAF 6 was released. So I just went what was ended up today. And the tiger animatronic would have been repurposed into Teresa Tiger in Nightmare Trolls 2. Back to Button. He was named after an actual hippo at my local aquarium back when I lived in New Jersey. There were plans to implement salvage styled sections into the game as you can see here. But they never came into full and were dropped entirely. Now on to May. And yes, that's actually what his name was. He was the first human based animatronic that I modeled. And as you can see, he's not the best character I modeled. He pretty much ended up being Pasquale from Chuck E. Cheese, but with white hair and a mustache, and sports a top hat and a suit. Wow. He ended up being scrapped because he didn't fit with the other characters and for his design alone. Anyway, last but not least, and I think the most interesting, is the inclusion of Freddy Fazbear himself. As stated in the, in the first game, FNAF and Nightmare Charles share the same universe. And in the second game, Fazbear Entertainment and CBC Entertainment partnered with each other but split their ways in the following game. During the partnership, the warehouse accumulated a lot of junk from Fazbear Entertainment, Freddy himself being one of them. The story behind his design is that he was found broken up after the events of the minigames in FNAF 3. It wasn't until someone took him into the warehouse and haphazardly tried to fix him with whatever was laying around. But since the company was on the brim of shutting down, he was abandoned again. Looking back on this now, I think having Charles' main competitor would have been an interesting concept, and he could have made it into the final game. If my old computer's hard drive hadn't decided to take a dip. Yeah, in November of 2019, my computer needed to go to a shop to get fixed and have its hard drive replaced. I was hoping my game files wouldn't get lost and were saved. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And as a result, I lost every bit of work I made for Nightmare Trolls 1 through 4. The models, the locations, the game files themselves. Those are all gone, and I'll never see them again. Luckily, I was able to recreate the models from the first two games before and after 2020 rolled over. Now back to the original game itself. With the characters and story in place, it was time to make the gameplay, one if not the most important aspects of a game. This is where the trouble started to kick in. I had a really hard time trying to think of good mechanics and what other things I could do to spice things up. It didn't help my motivation wasn't the best at the time either. But I did have one idea in mind, that being demon versions of the other characters. You know Demon Rabbit, right? The shadowy purple version of Charles Rabbit? Well, I thought maybe I could introduce his own army of demons. 
that would catch the player off guard when least expected, but these ideas were quickly scrapped as they would have been too similar to the Phantom's behavior. So with this game's troubling development and other aspects of my life, I decided to delay the game to 2020. I'm not going to go into detail on the game's development in second iteration, but I'll just say that Ricky had a redesign, Button, Mango, Mayor, and Freddy were removed and replaced with its current characters, and then the game came out on March 19th, 2020. So yeah, this game had quite the journey, and it, still ended up be and it still ended up having a mixed response, and I can see why. There was so much I could have done better with the game, but that's a discussion for another day. And I do have plans on repurposing the characters I just mentioned for future projects, but we'll just have to wait and see. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and let me know if you want to see more videos centered around the history of my games. This is Andrew John 100 signing off, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!